Charles Darwin is incredibly notable in the world of science, and has changed the way we see all forms of biological science, whether that be biology, zoology, or paleontology. And while Darwin changed a lot about science and how we view it, he didn't get everything right. Whether it be the lack of information from the time period, or just making inaccurate assumptions, here are some things that Darwin got wrong. For Darwin, the age of the Earth was a major unexplained difficulty. Darwin himself recognised that a great deal of time must have been necessary for the world's vast diversity of plants and animals to evolve, much more time than the 6,000 years allowed by the leading biblical interpretation of the Earth's age, with even most scientists at the time acknowledging that the Earth was certainly older. In 1862, the physicist by the name of William Thompson calculated that the planet was unlikely to be any more than 100 million years old, noting that the Earth loses heat through thermal conduction, and that geological processes must have changed as a consequence. The age of the Earth was one of Darwin's sorest troubles, and Thompson's research, as well as notes by his own son, George, an astronomer, convinced Darwin that the Earth was just under 100 million years old. This idea was embraced by Darwin and many other scientists, and it made sense to him. Darwin did not believe that 6,000 years was enough time for life to have diversified into the many forms seen around him, according to his own natural selection theory, so a time span of around 100 million years seemed reasonable. It wouldn't be until years after his death in the 1920s and 30s that geologists managed to calculate the rates of radioactive decay of elements, and the true age of the Earth at 4.5 billion years was discovered. Pangenesis was Charles Darwin's hypothetical mechanism for heredity, and is one of the few instances where one of Darwin's ideas were outright disproven. In this hypothetical form of heredity, Darwin proposed that each part of the body continually emitted its own small type of organic particles called gemmules that aggregated in the gonads, which would then contribute heritable information to the gametes. Darwin presented this hypothesis in his 1868 work the variation of animals and plants under domestication, and intended for pangenesis to fill in what he perceived as a major gap in his evolutionary theory at the time. For Darwin, his theory of pangenesis could finally explain a variation amongst organisms. Natural selection was among Darwin's best evidence for evolution, but there were holes in it, as, and Darwin did not know how it exactly worked. Offspring had a mix of their parents' features that were clearly passed on to the next generation, but how it all exactly occurred was a mystery. This is where pangenesis came into play, and it goes like this. Every cell in our body sheds tiny particles called gemmules, which are dispersed throughout the whole system, and these, when supplied with proper nutriment, multiply by self-division, and are ultimately developed into units like those from which they were originally derived. They are collected from all parts of the system to constitute the sexual elements, and their development in the next generation forms a new being. The idea of pangenesis mirrored ideas originally formulated by Hippocrates and other pre-Darwinian scientists, but built off of new concepts such as cell theory, explaining cell development as beginning with gemmules, which were specified to be necessary for the occurrence of new growth in an organism, both in initial development and regeneration. Darwin believed that gemmules could be altered during an organism's lifetime, and these newly acquired gemmules could multiply and supplant the new ones. This was similar to the now discredited theory of Lamarckism, which also argued that traits of an organism could be acquired over the course of their lives, which can then be passed on to their young. An example of Lamarckism would be giraffes elongating their necks to reach higher trees, although this was mainly used to discuss heredity rather than evolution, and was a small part of the theory. To make sure his theory of pangenesis worked, an experiment would need to be conducted to find if the theory held any ground, and that task fell into the hands of Darwin's cousin, Francis Galton. To prove that gemmules induced variation, Galton took the blood of one rabbit and injected it into another, with the idea that the offspring of the latter would show traits of the former. The offspring of the transfused rabbits did not inherit any traits of the original rabbit, and Galton declared that he had disproved Darwin's theory of pangenesis, but Darwin objected, claiming that the experiment was not entirely accurate, as he had never mentioned blood being involved in his writings. 
Darwin pointed out that he regarded pangenesis as occurring in protozoa and plants, which have no blood as well as in animals. However, the results from Galton's research was received well, and the theory of pangenesis came under fire, and the theory was often dismissed. The theory was effectively made obsolete after the 1900 discovery among biologists of Gregor Mendel's theory of the particulate nature of inheritance. After breeding pea plants and recording how traits get passed down from generation to generation, Mendel noticed that offspring weren't simply a blend of their two parents, as biologists had reckoned at the time. The offspring of a plant with smooth peas and another with wrinkled peas, for instance, would in itself have source of wrinkled peas, but either full-blown, smooth or wrinkled offspring. This is now what we refer to as dominant and recessive alleles, or versions of a particular gene. Darwin may have been wrong on some things, but being wildly wrong is a perfectly normal and healthy thing in science, as experimenting in many different ways can eventually reveal the truth. And if something comes around that proves that you're wrong, then it's progress in the right direction. Darwin tried to take a jab at inheritance and missed, but let's keep in mind that he was also responsible for the theory of evolution by natural selection, which more than makes up for the things he got wrong anyway. With all the progress made in science in recent years, it is always good to look back on the beginning of these accepted parts of our lives and see how they came to be, errors and all. And with that, I thank you for watching. Charles Darwin may have got things wrong, but, but the amount he contributed to science and how he shaped the way we view the world today is greatly appreciated, and has changed the way we view life on our Earth. And on that note, I hope you enjoyed. See you later.